Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here for today's video. Uh, right now, if you're watching this, chances are I am on vacation right now. Part 2 of my summer vacation. So, I thought I would make a pretty chill vi uh, video for you guys to watch today. If you guys don't mind dropping the like on this video, helping me get to 1,000 likes. That is the goal. Thank you all so much for that. But yeah, so some of you guys asked me, like, who are my favorite players of all time? I decided to do, could Crispy Flakes top 10 favorite players of all time go 82-0 in the NBA? So I'm going to go through each and every one of them right here. Um, now, keep in mind, there's a lot of players that I do like. So not only are these not in order, these are just 10 that I could really think of. I'm sure there's other ones out there that I could not think off the top of my head. Because uh, I'm somebody that really really likes, like, role players and stuff like that, too. But this could be more like the star players that I like and the guys that you know about. So the way that I broke this up was I did seven historical players because, you know, from like my favorite eras of the NBA and stuff like that. And then I did three players who are currently in the, in the NBA. So you guys can kind of get the uh, general idea of that. So yeah, man, let's go ahead and get started on this. Um, so I'm going to start with my most favorite player of all time. This one's not even debatable. He is my favorite player. He played for the Detroit Pistons and that is Chauncey Billups, guys. Yes, I absolutely love Chauncey Billups. Um, just like one of the greatest leading point guards of all time. This man would just be able to calm the game down and everything like that. Now, I'm not going to lie, though. Towards, like, the, the end of his stint with the Pistons, there were times where I would get kind of, like, stale with that team because they would always get so far. They would always get to the Eastern Conference Finals. Got there, like, six straight times. And then they would kind of, like, choke things away. So, uh, you know, there was that one point when Sean Smith was traded. And at that time, I feel stupid for it, but I was a little bit happy, man. But the reason I was happy, though... Low key, guys, the reason I was happy is because my second favorite player is who he was traded for. Yes, guys, I absolutely love Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson, just to me, um, God, man, like, like, like this dude gave short guys like myself so much motivation out there. Six foot, 165 pounds, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, pound for pound. That means, like, based off his pound and his weightage and everything like that. Uh, players of all time so yeah man he was traded to the pistons of course that was the downfall of his nba career ironically enough but regardless though man alan iverson absolutely love him so much um just like oh watch this crossover it's gonna get to the basket and all of it guys all right man for the third one one of my favorite players to ever use on 2k and one of my favorite players of all time the definition of loyalty played 20 years with his current nba team playing for the dallas mavericks Dirk Nowitzki, guys. Yes, Dirk Nowitzki. Oh, my. Oh, I, I can't get started on Dirk, guys. Just, like, hit that, that fadeaway. Just, man, that jump shot, that everything. Like, this dude right here, I'm going to be so sad when he retires from the NBA. Just really, like, you want to talk about players carrying a team to the NBA Finals all by themselves and winning it? I mean, not many have done that. Dirk Nowitzki was one of those players to do that, guys. Back on that team, they had, like, you know, Jason Kidd was on it and Sean Marion and Tyson Chandler. At that point, you know, Tyson Chandler was good. Some of those other players were kind of out of their prime and stuff like that. Um, But, yeah, man, Dirk Nowitzki, just offensively, he was just so crafty out there. And, like I said, that fadeaway, man. There was a 2K game where it, it's where they first started, like, introducing um, signature shots to the game. And they had Dirk's fadeaway on there. And you would do that from the elbow, and it would go in every single time. And it was pure cheese. And I had so much fun doing that, guys. Yes, okay. Uh, but speaking of guys that play with Dirk Nowitzki, my number four player of all time, that's one of my favorites, um, I would say his prime was probably on the New Jersey Nets. And where's he at, man? Where's he at? Okay, and that is Jason Kidd. I love watching this dude pass, man. Just like 24 hours ago, I was watching a video on like YouTube or Facebook or something like that of Jason Kidd's 45 top career assists. Um, in, in my opinion, man, I, I know people are going to fight me on this, but I think he was one of the most intelligent passers of all time. Just like watching him just being able to read like five steps ahead of the defense and be able to get the ball in the right spot was just such a great thing to watch i mean it seems like when the ball was in his hand you like he was going to get an assist and the play was going to get, get ex, uh, ex, executed well, i cannot talk man executed right uh per perfectly out there pretty much what i'm trying to say man jason gets a beast i don't know i think i'm just kind of starstruck right, right now by talking about my favorite all-time players all these great memories and stuff like that okay for my number five favorite player of all time the reason I like this dude is because I had an ugly-ass jump shot growing up, man. Guess what? It went in, though. It went in sometimes. Uh, this is another man that had an ugly-ass jump shot. But guess what? He still got buckets, and that is the Matrix, Sean Marion. I will say for a long time, he probably was my favorite player in the NBA. Just I remember playing, like, fantasy basketball. He was always a top three pick just because not only would he get you buckets out there, he get you rebounds. Uh, he gets you steals, blocks, assists, everything out there. He really was a player before his time. If you were to play in the NBA right now, he would be like one of the best players, playing simple, just because he, he 
he fits perfectly into that small ball style of offense and uh, that's exactly what the Phoenix Suns did I mean they, they were an offense before their time out there with what they brought so yeah man Sean Marion the Matrix welcome to my all-time favorite 10 okay next up number six overall from the Houston Rockets if I can find that team here it is come on man Yao Ming who does not like Yao Ming Yao Ming was so much fun to watch like because he was like just being seven six but he wasn't like a guy that would just like beast you or bowl you down low he was very finesse with his height which is something that was very fun to watch the guy that is seven six I remember being on like the ESPN forums uh back in the day this was before like Twitter and Facebook it's just like literally like you would go on ESPN.com they would have like, have like their forums going and you would just like argue in threads and stuff like that and people always argued who was better Yao Ming or Dwight Howard I was always team Yao Ming when it came to that but oh what, what I'm doing man one sec let's get him on the right team assigned to another team there we go oh, yeah I was always team Yao Ming though I was so sad that he had retired early in his NBA career due to like a, I think I believe it was a foot injury um but recently it just said that he just he, like he's been going to college for the past like seven years or so and he finally graduated with his degree in economics so Yao Ming was so big for basketball no pun attended welcome to the Detroit Pistons all right number seven this is the player that I got to meet in real life it was amazing ever since I met this guy right here I have been a better basketball player because of it and that is big Ben Wallace when you think of bad boy Pistons guys you think of Ben Wallace and let me just say straight up I could add Tayshaun Rip Hamilton and Rasheed Wallace all to this list Tayshaun Rasheed are not in this game Rip Hamilton uh, I like them but not in my top 10 but yeah guys Ben Wallace okay so um I believe it was back in February maybe maybe not that long ago I don't know so so, so months ago I got a chance to go to a tournament for 2k Ben Wallace was there I got to shoot baskets on the court with Ben Wallace I asked him to play defense on me and well did not end well but for once he, he, he just said he wasn't going to do it he wasn't trying but you know he wasn't trying ball or nothing like that but I shot a three-pointer right by him and it went off the top of the backboard he looked at me man and I swear to god this man just played defense with that glaze like that like that like just him looking at me was intimidating enough to shut me down or maybe it was my broke ass jump shot probably just that but yeah guys Ben Wallace is really very uh, very a uh, chill dude uh you know just very down to earth and stuff like that so welcome to the Detroit Pistons of course you know we love your man big man he is the man in Detroit okay so we did seven of my favorite historical players of all time Jerry Stackhouse another player that I really like too um Chris Paul I like him a lot too but yeah man now we're gonna do three players in real that are currently in the NBA so number eight plays for the Denver Nuggets just got himself a max contract I don't know if you guys like know, I know this about me but one of my favorite things about the game of basketball is the assist I love a beautiful crisp pass out there I don't know why it's just so much fun to watch I know when I personally play basketball like three-pointers are nice I like shooting those get into the basket stuff like that but if I can get a nice around the back over the head no look pass something like that that's my favorite thing to do yo kitchen center position does it perfectly in the NBA so uh yeah I don't know I just I, I've liked him for the past few seasons been in the NBA I think he has such a high ceiling to him and welcome to the Detroit Pistons you are number eight all right number nine not gonna lie though guys this man that I'm about to pick does play for the bitch ass Warriors but it's not his fault I do think he could lead a team on his own when this guy goes off with his jump shot there is no stopping him whatsoever it's not Stephen Curry it's not Kevin Durant it's not bitch ass Draymond nut kicking grain wherever you call him these days it is Clay Thompson Clay Thompson is awesome I don't care if you don't like the Warriors or not I mean yeah I got my beef with like them signing Kevin Durant and stuff like that and Boogie Cousins but this team before that really did build their team out there and Clay Thompson is just like the ideal teammate um could no doubt be a number one option on an NBA team but has decided to be a third option for the you know sacrifice himself for the sake of the team but even with that still goes off with a shot a lot man I remember this there's been times we scored like what was it 37 points in one quarter against uh Nick Stauskas from Michigan that was pretty cool to watch and it's just like I said man one of the most like purest jump shots in the entire NBA history welcome to the Pistons and finally one of my favorite players currently in the NBA um this guy has not won MVP yet based off last season number C put up and still not getting it I don't think he's ever gonna win one he deserves one I just don't know if he ever will but I respect what he does out there he does play for the Pelicans and that is Anthony Davis so Anthony Davis before he you know became 6'10 253 pounds one of the most dominant big men in the NBA uh, game he was actually just like a scrawny little point guard like he was like really like short and stuff like that um really had the handles out there he grew to be Anthony I mean yeah he's always been Anthony Davis right but he grew to be the brow like I don't know man it, it reminds me of Bruce Banner just turning into the Hulk and that's exactly what little old Anthony Davis did. he turned to the Hulk aka Anthony Davis the brow and uh just watch him around the basket watch him shoot you know shoot a shot out there and stuff like that 
so much fun to watch unstoppable and I think I honestly think guys he's probably one of the best one of the best bets to beat in the uh, Golden State Warriors in the Western Conference welcome to the Detroit Pistons but yeah guys those are ton of my favorite players so I'm going to go ahead and uh, simulate to the beginning of a simulation and we are going to see if this team can go 82-0 Okay, so here is the start of the lineup I'm going to go with. Chauncey Billups at point guard, uh, Allen Iverson at shooting guard, Sean Marion at small forward, Dirk at power forward, and Yao Ming at center. Off the bench, we got Anthony Davis, Jason Kidd. I start Chauncey over him because I like him better. Uh, Clay Thompson, Big Ben Wallace, and Nikola Jokic to round out the 10-man rotation. Um, so yeah, do I expect this team to go 8-0? I don't know, man. Bitch has Warriors always be beating up on teams and stuff like that in this game. At the same time, too, I'll probably lose to the freaking like Atlanta Hawks or something like that. But let's go ahead and start this simulation because what I'm going to talk about as we go through the simulation here, simulate through date. Yo, let me do this real quick. Yo, oh, yo, let's check out this box score real quick, man. Let's just see. 24 for AI, 24 for your uh, Dirk, 16, 15 for Big Yao Ming. All right, I'm sorry. I wanted to put on the playoff, the uh, playoff picture so you guys can see all that there. So you can see how your favorite team is doing. Simulate through date. Uh, but yeah, so when I think of like basketball, what is my favorite era of basketball of all time? Well, I did start watching in 2004. You might call me a Detroit Son of a fucker! Some bitch ass warriors, guys. Ruin my fucking life. Ruin my fucking life, man. God damn. Get the fuck off the god. I, I, I wish fucking Thanos would snap his fingers and the Warriors roster would just dis. I'm, okay, that was that was dark. I'm sorry, man. I don't mean that. I don't want nobody to freaking disappear. Oh my god. I'm just saying though, man. The Warriors. Why can't I fucking do this? All right, let me get the simulation going again. And start talking, guys. Okay, I will say my favorite era of basketball. Um, you know, 2004 is when I did start watching because I was a hype beast. You know, my Detroit Pistons was doing good, but it was when I was first introduced. Like my mom actually got me introduced to the game. Um, so that was really cool at the time. And I liked watch for the next few seasons. Like I was hardcore watching my PlayStation 2 had the little uh, online adapters so you could actually play online against people. Man, I'm telling you, PlayStation 2. Uh, 2k lobbies some of the greatest times of my life and playing some 2k leagues on there absolutely fun and then like 2008 hits and that trade for Kevin Garnett over to the Boston Celtics for uh Big Al Jefferson that was kind of the beginning of a new era of basketball because that was like the very start of kind of like you know like the the, the superstars teaming up it was something you didn't really see up until that point at least from, from when, when I was watching basketball guys I'm not talking about the 80s and 90s yeah, I know there was probably teams like that back then too, but I'm talking about when I started watching basketball, right? Um, so that kind of started changing things right there. You know, you had Tim Duncan and the Spurs. I mean, they were dominant throughout the 2000s. Uh, Steve Nash on the Phoenix Suns. They were always fun to watch, but always beat down my Pistons and stuff like that. But yeah, once that Celtics team thing hit, uh, then after a while, you know, it's like LeBron James happened with the decision, joined the Miami Heat. Although uh, LeBron James, he was always a problem my Pistons had to deal with. I'll say that straight up, guys. Like... As much as, like, I, I do like LeBron James now. He's not one of my favorite players of all time. I'm not going to say that. But I, I do like to watch him because it's fun to watch greatness, right? And uh, he was a big reason why my Pistons didn't do much more in the NBA. I mean, we have that one championship. And we had all those, you know, we had all those Eastern Conference Finals appearances. But LeBron James just, since he's really entered the NBA, has just been taken over completely, though, guys. Like, as far as the Eastern Conference goes, I'm not saying overall uh, as a champion because we know his finals record. But the fact of getting to the finals that many times which is what my dad told me about my pistons uh once they started doing bad he's like you know get into the you know being the top four team for six straight seasons there's something to be said about that yeah it's all about winning championships and stuff like that too but i mean there's something to be said about that um but yeah as, as, as far as like the current era of basketball i do like it don't get me wrong it's just different it's it's not the nba i grew up watching it's a different version of it but it's still fun it's fun in a different way and i think that's the the, the thing about the nba game evolving and you know, having a lot more like athletic based guards and stuff like that. It's, it's different, right? It's, but it's, it's a good kind of different. And because if things stay the same, they're going to get us uh, stale, which is why NBA All-Star Weekend is always so boring now because they freaking don't ever change. And whenever they try to, they take a big L with it. But yeah, man, so our final record. Oh my God, we lost one freaking bitch ass game to the bitch ass Warriors, guys. I cannot believe that. MVP Russell Westbrook, DeAndre and Rookie of the Year. Jason Kidd, six man of the year. That makes sense because... One of the best point guards to ever do it. Dwayne Casey, coach of the year, my Pistons. Oh, by the way, favorite coach of all time. Um, Either Larry Brown or Flip Saunders. Rest in peace, Flip Saunders. I was sad to hear him pass, guys, when he passed away. Uh, when he was coaching the Timberwolves, one of my favorite coaches of all time. But, yeah, here's the awards for you guys all to see real quick. 
and let's check out these team and player stats. I imagine we will win the finals here, right? So team stats uh, averaged 126 points per game, gave up 87.8, had a 38 point differential out there, which is like almost quadruple anybody else out there, right? Okay, player stats. Allen Iverson, the leading scorer at 24 points, six assists. Dirk Nowitzki at 21 points, 10 rebounds, three assists per game. Jason Kidd as the sixth man, third lead and score. Yeah, Yao Ming going out there, grabbing the 13 and 10 rebounds. Anthony Davis doing his thing. Sean Marion, uh, Sean Spills, 12 points, eight assists out there. You know, getting the offense running. Clay Thompson shooting them threes. Then Ben Wallace grabbing those rebounds in limited time, limited minutes. But here we go. First round, we do have the Miami Heat. So simulate current round, see how this goes. We better not lose, man. I do want to see them bitch-ass Warriors in the finals, though, so I can beat them down real quick. Here is the closeout game. 24-8 and 8 for Iverson, 20-7 and 7 for Dirk Nowitzki. Next up, 76ers simulate current round. Got them four games to zero. Close out looking like this. Next up, the Toronto Raptors simulate current round. Got them. We do have the Warriors in the finals. So let's go ahead and beat them down real quick here. Simulate current round. And we got them four games to zero, guys. We literally went like 95-1 and one in this entire video. Dirk Nowitzki... Your final is MVP. So much good memories using him in 2K and just watching him in NBA history, guys. Thank you all so much for watching, man. Be sure to drop that like. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. And peace out, my friend.